Society is there now live with a look at how things look this morning. Hey, Masa. Good morning to you, Melissa. Now people are growing increasingly desperate. I'm about eight miles from the barrier islands. And as you know, the hurricane washed away bridges. So people have been trapped since Wednesday without running water, without power. Crews are trying to rescue them. They have rescued hundreds of people. But when you're trapped on that island without information, water or power, it's just not fast enough. So we know that's happening about eight miles away back here on the main land this is what we're seeing really in all communities whether they were hit really hard or less hard people are throwing out their stuff because everyone experienced some level of flooding you can see here's a fridge that's been tossed out by the people who live here a television they have some cds tossed out personal items some painting supplies furniture and so forth but the good news is that people are trying to help. We have officials from all over, including Tampa Bay, coming here to do whatever they can, including the Polk County Sheriff's Office. Listen to what Lieutenant said, one Lieutenant said about the mission. We come in totally self-sufficient. We, we bring our own bunk trailers, we bring our own office building, the command center, we bring our own shower trailers, our own water, our own power, our own food, our own fleet services, our own EMS and fire to take care of our folks. I think everybody that we've come in contact with has thanked us. Um, they, I, they're happy to see us. They're happy, they, they, they're embracing us. Um, we're trying to help them as much as we can. And back out here alive, the folks who live here put out the American flag showing the pride in their country and also their state. And if you take a look, now they are being forced to wash their clothes by hand and hang it out to dry. So that's the conditions that people are dealing with. And of course, Melissa, we know that federal assistance is available. FEMA will help you, give you thousands of dollars to make repairs to your home, but it's not going to make people whole here. And it's certainly the help is not going to come incredibly fast. And we also want to mention that we have seen uh, crews working around the clock to try to restore the power. But Melissa, you know this, having covered hurricanes in your career, the power grid is incredibly complicated. Everywhere you look, there has been downed power lines. So we're not sure exactly the extent of the damage to the infrastructure. And people just don't know when the power is going to be back, Melissa. It's, it's, it's rough. Yeah, Masa, and speaking of that, you know, their homes are damaged, power's out. What are you seeing in the different neighborhoods? Are you seeing a lot of residents still there trying to clean up, or are you seeing people that, you know, is it empty? It's the the worst off a neighborhood is it's starting to be empty because by now uh, four days after the storm people have come back they've walked into their house they realize that everything's gone so they are not here but in other parts of uh, southwest Florida we are seeing people down in Naples where we're staying there's people everywhere the area wasn't hit the part that we are in as bad as here Melissa. And traveling around to the different neighborhoods, what's it like trying to navigate, trying to get through these roads? It's a little bit better now. And the moments after the storm, you were in the field, you saw it. I mean, there was flooding everywhere. There were trees everywhere. Even now, it will take us yesterday. It took us, you know, three times longer to get back to where we were because the street lights aren't working and we have these major intersections with all these cars just looking at each other. So traffic is slow, but the roads are more clear now because so many days have passed. All right, Masa, thank you so much for that update.